So, hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography PX. In today's video, we will cover the main highlight features and do an overview of Sony's RX10 Mark III. Do know you can find timestamps and links in the description down below, as well as the pinned comment. And also know this is not a sponsored video. Let's get started. Initially released in the spring of 2016, Sony's RX10 III is the official successor to the previously released RX10 II, and at the time of release it was their flagship Cybershot digital stills camera. It's a compact super zoom bridge camera aimed at beginning photographers looking for a step up in image quality, or existing shooters looking for a capable all-in-one platform. And it's a camera that they design as a stepping stone to transition to their alpha mirrorless lineup, and one they aim to compete with Panasonic's FZ2500, Canon's SZ70, and Nikon's P900. It inherits the same 1 inch 20.1 megapixel stacked backside illuminated CMOS sensor and the Bion's X image processor as the predecessor. The backside illumination arrangement of the sensor increases the processing speed and light collection efficiency, which both help to improve the camera's image quality. And new for this model is an updated Zeiss Vario sonar lens. This lens now offers a 35mm equivalent zoom of 24 to 600mm, with a variable aperture from f2.4 to 4.0. This increased focal length affords the camera a 25 times super zoom lens, up from only 8 times on the predecessor. Like the predecessor, the lens has a built-in stabilization system, which Sony calls Steady Shot, and the lens has a new focus hold button, which locks the focus in place and doubles as a customizable button. The camera also provides continuous shooting speeds of 14 frames per second without autofocus or 5 frames per second with continuous autofocus and tracking. And the buffer depth is excellent for the class at 30 raw images or 44 JPEGs. On the video front, it shoots 4K Ultra HD video up to 30 frames per second with a full pixel readout, and 1080p Full HD video up to 120 frames per second, and both to the XAVCS, AVC HD, or MP4 formats with a maximum data rate of 100 megabits per second. And a nice bonus is the camera also records audio when shooting at 120 FPS, a rare addition for this class. Plus, it doesn't suffer from any signs of overheating whatsoever. It also obtains a good selection of advanced picture profiles, including Cine, Rec. 709, and Sony's S-Log2. Otherwise, it features the high frame rate HFR mode, zebras for clipping indication, a clean 4K via HDMI out, auto dual record, and proxy recording. Low light performance is good for the class. It has a native ISO range from ISO 100 to 12,800 and users can expect usable images up to ISO 3200. For focus, it uses a contrast detection based autofocusing system with IAF and face detection. And it also has focus magnification, manual focus assist, and focus peaking for those who prefer manually focusing. The camera uses the same long-standing NPFW50 battery used on much of Sony's cameras. However, battery life is excellent for the class and Sony rates the camera to deliver 420 shots per charge or 210 minutes of video recording. For displays, it has a 2.95 inch tilting TFT LCD with a resolution of 1.23 million dots. The display also articulates by about 107 degrees up or down by 42 degrees, adding versatility to high or low angle shooting. The screen also now provides the sunny weather mode, and the camera also features a 2.36 million dot XGA OLED electronic viewfinder with a 0.7 times magnification, a similar setup to Sony's A6300. Physically, considering the camera's enormous zoom range, it remains surprisingly compact and easy to store for travel. Though at 1051 grams, it's not the lightest camera in this class. But if you factor in the number of lenses required to achieve its focal length on an interchangeable lens camera, it's quite a bargain. Its size affords it plenty of physical controls, and it also has a weather-resistant construction. But outside of that, it has a built-in flash, built-in panorama, microphone and headphone inputs, wireless connectivity, Sony's Zoom Assist feature, USB charging, Sony's Play Memories App Store, Sony's multi-interface hot shoe, and a fully silent electronic shutter. In the end, Sony's RX10 III is a camera geared towards convenience and practicality, and Sony's created a package that delivers arguably the best bridge camera to date, where nothing else achieves this level of versatility in a single package. 
And while it provides an easy to use platform for beginners, it's also doubly capable for manual shooters, be it stills or video. Sony's known for great sensors and feature packed cameras, and this camera inevitably follows suit. With its excellent Zeiss lens and updated capabilities, it's quite a compelling camera in this class, even more so considering a lens with its range on a DSLR would easily cost the camera's price alone. Thus, given its features, versatility, and price point, it provides exceptional value for money and remains a strong contender today. So, there you have it my friends, there are the highlights in the overview of Sony's RX10 III. For more information on the RX10 III and other Sony cameras, check out our website photographypx.com, go to our camera reviews page, then to the Sony section, and there you will see a full detailed written review, as well as reviews of other cameras that may be of interest to you. You can also look at the pinned comment in the description down below, and that will take you right to the full review as well. I've been your host, Von Lennox. We will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the contents of today's video insightful and it added value to you. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, leave us a like and a comment in the description down below. Let us know if we overlook something or we missed something that we covered in today's video. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, photography. <laughs>